Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Really great to have everybody here. And I want to um, offer a special welcome. We have students from Cal Baptist who are joining us this evening. So welcome to all of you. Uh, I hope that uh, you'll be able to enjoy our service. And um, if you have some questions later on, um, you know, hang around after the service is over and we'll try to answer for you, okay? So we're going to begin with Hine Matov, how good it is to be together as brothers and sisters. Um, please join us with your unmuted uh, microphones. And uh, Jordan is going to uh, is going to lead this. So this evening, we are holding a refugee Shabbat to call attention to the plight of 80 million people in this world who are refugees, forced to flee their homes because of violence, war, or persecution. Why is it important for us as Jews to devote time during our service to this subject? Rabbi Jonathan Sachs, the former chief rabbi of Great Britain tells us, I used to think that the most important line in the Bible was love your neighbor as yourself. Then I realized that it's easy to love your neighbor because he or she is usually quite like yourself. What is hard to love is the stranger, one whose color, creed, or culture is different from yours. That is why the command love the stranger because you were once strangers, resonates so often throughout the Bible. It is summoning us now. And Lori Magnus is going to light our Shabbat candles and lead us in the candle blessing. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, asher kedeshanu v'mitzvotah v'tzivanu lehalik ner shel Shabbat. Amen. Thank you, Lori. 
And Jordan is going to lead us in the Kiddush. Baruch Atadonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Barei Puri HaGafen Baruch Atadonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kishanu B'mitzvotav V'ratzavahanu V'shabat Kod Shov V'ahava U'vratzon Hinchilanu Zicharon L'mahase V'reishit Kihu yom tehila le mikra kodesh zeher le tziyat mitzrayim kivanu vachata veotanu kidashta mechol hamin Veshabat koshecha ve'ahava uvratzon hinchaltanu. Baruch atah Adonai mekadesh ha-shabbat. Amen. Thank you. The Hebrew Immigrant Aid Society, or HIAS, has concerned itself with the plight of refugees in America since 1881, initially to help Jewish, Jewish refugees. And we're gonna look at a little short video to explain the work that they do. There are places where being who you are is a punishable offense. There are places where you might be sentenced to death because you chose to live. These places have many names, but the ones who flee have one, refugee. And it is in the name of the refugee that Hayes has dedicated itself for the last 130 years. Created in the name of the Jewish people, for the Jews who fled Tsarist Russia, and Soviet Russia, the Jews who fled the death camps of Europe, the Jews exiled from places as varied as Algeria and Cuba and Iran, four and a half million rescued and resettled so far. When they said, give us your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, we were the ones at the docks helping them breathe free. We are still at the docks, and the deserts, and the cities, and camps, and lands where people no longer have a home in their homeland. Only now it's a farmer from Darfur, a shop owner from Syria, a family from Ukraine, a child from Colombia, a Christian from Iran, a gay man from Uganda. The 70 million souls who still wander the earth in search of sanctuary. Why? Maybe it's because being Jewish means you don't have to be reminded never to forget. Maybe it's because we are called in our most sacred texts to love the stranger. Or maybe it's because as long as there are still places it is a crime to be who you are, there is still a mandate for us to be who we are. Hyas for the refugee. Jacob, are you with us tonight? Jacob Davidson, because maybe I'll have you do the Vea Hafta. I am here. Would you like to do the Vea Hafta? Sure. Okay, we're not there yet, but Carolee's not here this evening, so um, I'm going to have, uh, have you lead us. That'll be great. So we continue with Lachado D. We are, we're gonna continue the Lachado D, which is the wonderful piece that was um, written and you know, developed by the Kabbalists, the mystics of our tradition. And they used to wear white and go out into the fields to welcome the Sabbath queen. So Jordan is going to lead us in that song. <clears throat> Thank 
Amen. Geheesh me rabba me varach, le alam lal me ammaya, yit varach. Yit varach, vish tabach, vit paar, vit romam, vit nase, vit hadar, vit ale, vit halal, shme de kudusha berichu. Le elam in kol birchatav ashirata, tush berchatav nechemata, dami ran be'alma. Amen. We continue with the Baruch Hu, the call to worship. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
The mystics of our tradition say that before God created the world, God occupied all space. And then in order to make room for the world, God had to retract. Basically, it's what we call tsum. Retracting to make space for the world, God performed the greatest act of hospitality. And here's how the great Rabbi Joseph Soloveitchik explains it. The Almighty is the great welcomer of guests. God's hospitality made it possible for humanity to exist, for the world to come into being. To be means to share in the infinite being of the Almighty. The Almighty, like Abraham, invites people to partake of God's boundless existence. Creation is an act of hachnasat orchim, of welcoming guests. We are just strangers whom the Almighty has invited into the divine tent, which is the universe. How beautiful is the doctrine of tzimtzum, of contraction. What is creation if not withdrawal by God in order to make it possible for a world to emerge in space and time? Infinity steps aside and finitude is born. What is hachnasat orchim if not withdrawal by the master from a part of his home so that a stranger can occupy the empty part he vacates? Ahabad olam. God loves us with infinite love. <laughs> Yeah, your mom will 
continue with the Shema. Jacob Davidson is going to lead us in the Vea Hafta. David, if you could put that up, you could pray. Thank you. Vea Hafta, eight on Nile, ha ha, the whole of her, the whole after her, the whole of her, the whole you, Havarim, ha ha. Ashe on a he met of a ha a young a la babaha. Machine on home la banaha. Very bored a bum. The sheep to ha. The wait a ha. Uf left a ha badera. Uf uf took the ha. Uf come a ha. Uf chartam lay out all ya da ha. The ha you little defo. Baini naha, utav taham, amuz zope taha, uvisharaha, amon tiskaru, beasi tam at bamitz vata, kahitam, kahitam kadoshim leil heham, ani arona, oheham, asha otiat ham. Merat Mitraim, the Oaham, Leohim, Ani, Anil Heham. Excellent job. Very nice, Jacob. And that was all. We're not at the Michamocha yet. Um, David. Okay, thanks. Jacob just stepped in and did it. 
spontaneously. I'm really proud of you, uh, Jacob. So in the Talmud, Rav Yohanan said, hospitality to guests is as great as early attendance at the house of study. Rav Dimi of Nehardia said, it is greater than early attendance at the house of study. Rav Judah said in Rav's name, hospitality to guests is greater than welcoming the presence of the Shekhinah, which is God. There are six things, the fruit of which humans eat in this world, while the principle remains for them in the world to come. Welcoming guests, visiting the sick, meditation and prayer, early attendance for study, rearing one's children to the, to the study of Torah, and judging one's neighbor in the scale of merit. Just as the sea opened up to make way for the Israelites escaping slavery in Egypt, we too need to open our hearts to those escaping persecution and violence. The Michamocha, the song of the sea, which we sang when we were liberated from slavery. have a poem that was written by a Somali poet whose name is Warsan Shire. It's called Home. No one leaves home unless home is the mouth of a shark. You only run for the border when you see the whole city running as well. Your neighbors running faster than you. Breath bloody in their throats. The boy you went to school with who kissed you dizzy behind the old tin factory is holding a gun bigger than his body. You only leave home when home won't let you stay. No one leaves home unless home chases you. Fire under feet, hot blood in your belly. It's not something you ever thought of doing until the blade burnt threats into your neck. And even then you carried the anthem under your breath, only tearing up your passport in an airport toilet sobbing as each mouthful of paper made it clear that you wouldn't be going back. You have to understand that no one puts their children in a boat unless the water is safer than the land. No one burns their palms under trains beneath carriages. No one spends days and nights in the stomach of a truck feeding on newspaper, 
unless the miles traveled means something more than journey. No one crawls under fences. No one wants to be beaten, pitied. No one chooses refugee camps or strip searches where your body is left aching or prison because prison is safer than a city of fire. And one prison guard in the night is better than a truckload of men who look like your father. No one could take it. No one could stomach it. No one skin would be tough enough. The refugees, dirty immigrants, asylum seekers sucking our country dry. They smell strange, savage, messed up their country, and now they want to mess up ours. How do the words, the dirty looks roll off your backs? Maybe because the blow is softer than a limb torn off or the words are more tender or the insults are easier to swallow than rubble, than bone, than your child body in pieces. I want to go home, but home is the mouth of a shark. Home is the barrel of a gun and no one would leave home unless home chased you to the shore unless home told you to quicken your legs, leave your clothes behind, crawl through the desert, wade through the oceans, drown, be hungry, beg, forget pride, your survival is more important. No one leaves home until home is a sweaty voice in your ear saying, leave, run away from me now. I don't know what I've become, but I know that anywhere is safer than here. The Hashkivenu is a prayer where we ask for people to be able to lie down in peace. And that's what we wish for all these refugees fleeing their own countries, despite the fact that they'd rather not. Venu Adonai, Eloheinu le Shalom, the Hamidenu Malkeinu Lechaim, Hashkivenu Adonai, Eloheinu le Shalom, the Hamidenu Malkeinu Lechaim. Adonai, Eloheinu le Shalom, Behamideinu Malkeinu Lechaim. Ashkiveinu Adonai, Eloheinu le Shalom, Behamideinu Malkeinu Lechaim.
We continue with the tefillah. Adonai sefatai tiftahu fi agita hilatecha. Eternal God, open up my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu velohe avoteinu vimoteinu. Elohe Abraham, Elohe Yitzchak, Elohe Yaakov, Elohe Sarah, Elohe Rivka, Elohe Rachel, Elohe Leah, Ha El Hagadol, Hagibur Vehanora, El El Yon, Gomel Hasadim Tovim Vekone Hakol, Vezocher Hasea Vodva Imahot. Who may be Geula, leave Navene, Hamleman, Shamo, Beahava, Mela Hoser, Umoshia, Uma again, Baruchata, Adonai, Magain, Avraham, Vesrat, Sarah, Atagi, Burle, Lamadonai, Mehaye, Hakol, Atara, Lehoshia, Mehal, Kel, Haim, Berheset, Mechaye ha kol berachamim rabim, so mech noflim verofe holim, u matir asurim, u mekayem emunato, li shene afar, mi ha mochaba agevurot, u mi dome lach. Melech me mi tu mechaye, u mats mi ach yeshua, ne imana talo hachayot hako, baruchata adonai, mechaye hako. Takadosh, fishim hakadosh, u kedoshim bahoyom ye hallelujah selah, baruchata adonai. Ha'el ha'kadosh. And we continue silently for a few minutes. We continue with Shalom Rav, a prayer for great peace. Shalom Rav, Al Yisrael Amcha, Be'akol Yoshvei Tebel. Shalom Rav, Al Yisrael Amcha, Tassim Le'olam. Shalom Rav, Al Yisrael Amcha, Be'akoho Yoshvei Tebel. Shalom Rav, Al Yisrael Amcha, Tassim Le'olam. Ki Yata Hu Melech Adon, Lechol HaShalom. Yata hu melech adon lechol hashalom. Shalom rab al Yisrael amcha 
moment now to think of those in need of healing their body of mind or spirit spirit i'm sorry we think of congregants and friends and family of congregants jonathan davidson kathy cronenfeld jeff hicks randy rubin ben henderson kara gilman rabbi steve robbins gloria mangus steve lux leslie ferris emily pasquarelli julie lapidus Pamela Mangus, Johnny Sickat, Jerry Hirsch, Marty Tarmo, Amanda Burr, Terry Ray Elmer, Dennis Boylan, Judy Cronenfeld, Gary Droutman, Irene Sherman, Sandy Schneider, Max Krohn. And if you'd like to put names in the chat or unmute yourselves, you are welcome to do so. Ron Jones, Jess Landis. Patty Podner, Rocky Ofstein, Amy Morton, Roberta Gershon, Diana Anderson, Elliot Callen, Marilyn Giller. Any other names? Rocco Levine. And please join us in the Misha Barach, the prayer for healing. Misha Barach Avoteinu Avraham Yitzchak the Me Shivera Himotenu Zavra Rifka Lea Berahel. May the one who blessed our mother, may the one who Blessed our Father, hear our prayer, hear our prayer, hear our prayer, hear our prayer, and bless us as well. Bless us with the power of your healing. Bless us with the power of your hope. May our hearts be filled with understanding and strengthened by the power of your love. Bless us with the vision for tomorrow. Help us to reach out to those in pain. May the warmth of friendship ease our sorrow. 
Give us courage, show us faith, show us the way. Me shabel rachavoteinu. Me shabel rachimoteinu. Hear our prayer, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer, hear our prayer, and bless us as well. Hear our prayer, hear our prayer, hear our prayer, hear our prayer, and bless us as well. So I think most of you uh, know that yesterday marked the one year anniversary since the time that the World Health Organization declared a pandemic with the COVID-19 virus. This is a uh, prayer poem by Leslea Newman called 13 Ways of Looking at Life Before the Virus. I remember shaking hands damp sweaty hands and dry scratchy hands, bone crushing handshakes and dead fish handshakes, two handed handshakes, my hands sandwiched between a pair of big beefy palms. I remember hairy hands and freckled hands, young smooth hands and old wrinkled hands, red polished fingernails and bitten jagged fingernails, stained hands of hairdressers who had spent all day dying, D-Y-E-I-N-G. Dirty hands of gardeners who dug down deep into the good earth. Thousands of years ago, a man stuck out his right hand to show a stranger he had no weapon. The stranger took his hand and shook it to make sure he had nothing up his sleeve. And that is how it began. I remember sharing a bucket of greasy popcorn with a boy at the movies, though I no longer remember the boy or the movie the thrill of our hands accidentally on purpose, brushing each other in the dark. I remember my best girlfriend and me facing each other to play a hand clapping game, shrieking, Miss Mary, Mac, 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 and the loud satisfying smack as our four palms slapped. I remember high fives and how we laugh when we missed and then do a do-over. I remember the elegant turn of shiny brass doorknobs, cool to the touch. I remember my mother's hands tied to the railings of her hospital bed and how I untied them when the nurse wasn't looking and held them in my lap. I remember holding my father's hand, how the big college ring he wore rubbed against my birthstone ring and irritated my fourth finger, but I never pulled away. I remember the joy of offering my index finger to a new baby who wrapped it in her fist as we gazed at each other in wonder. I remember tapping a stranger on the shoulder and saying, your tag is showing, do you mind if I tuck it in? She didn't mind, I tucked it in. I remember salad bars and hot bars. I remember saying, want a bite? And offering a forkful of food for my plate. I remember asking, can I have a sip? and placing my lips on the edge of your cold, frosty glass. I remember passing around the Kiddush cup, each of us taking a small sip of wine. I remember passing around the challah, each of us ripping off a big yeasty hunk. I remember picking up a serving spoon someone had just put down without giving it a second thought. I remember sitting with a mourner at a funeral, not saying a word, simply taking her hand. So these are some of the things we remember from the days before the pandemic. As more and more of, of us are getting vaccinated, we are trying to figure out how we're gonna come back together in person and still stay safe. And we had a conversation about this in our COVID committee 
Um, at some point, we're probably going to send out or call a number of people to find out what you think. But since we're all here together this evening, I thought maybe we would share some thoughts about, would you feel safe? Let's say at the high holidays, which is September. Would you feel safe coming back in? Let's start with that. Does anybody want to venture forth? Yes or no, do you, would you feel safe coming back in in September? Maybe if everybody was already immunized. If everybody was already immunized, okay. Yeah. Uh, Lynn says she would, anyone else? Anyone feel unsafe, Bill? I think I'd feel safe. I hope we would, even before the high old days, we can continue with a combination of in-person and Zooms that would reduce the number of people at Temple at any one time. Yes, we're, 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 we've been talking about, so what's happening now is that um, we're talking about continuing to do a hybrid service. Um, I think hybrid services are here to stay. Um, I think some people find it really much easier to attend a service or a an adult ed class by just clicking on their computer rather than getting back in their car. But obviously we're gonna to have to have in-person as well as um, you know, uh, remote uh, like we have been doing. Um, now there's some comments in the chat. Let me take a look at them. Okay, uh, yes, Andrea says, possibly Jacob Davidson says, Teresa says, I'd feel safe as long as everyone was immunized. I would feel safe. If people were vaccinated and we were socially distanced, I would feel safe. So here's a question. Do we only, let's say, the first time we get together, have people who are vaccinated and how do we ensure that they are? Do we trust people coming or do we ask them for a card to show that they've been vaccinated? What are your thoughts about that? To show cards in theaters, they're gonna be showing cards in, in venues. I would hope we could trust our congregants to be honest and truthful. Because I will say that um, some of my colleagues are really, really uncomfortable with the idea of having to show a card. Um, Christine's not worried to show her card. Judith Triber, you raised your hand. You're muted. Judith, you're, mu you're muted. My favorite motto for the year. Are you talking about with or without masks? We'd have to have masks and be socially distanced. Yes, until we're told that that is no longer necessary. We Even with everybody immunized, we'd still have to all wear masks and be socially distanced. Well, that would be more comfortable, yeah. 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 Okay, Gary Droutman or Barbara Droutman said, hybrid services are good and service is always nice. We'd feel safe if everyone is vaccinated and wore masks. I mean, that's what we've been talking about is bringing only people in who are vaccinated um, mass and social distancing. Hmm. And Joan says, of course, it depends on how things are with the new mutation. See, this is what's so frustrating and stressful right. is that we don't know what's gonna happen with variants. We don't know how long the vaccines are good for. We don't know if there's gonna be some sort of a spike because of spring break. Tiffany is, I would feel safe with mass social distancing and vaccinations, right. Um, We've talked about doing possibly an outdoor service. Um, you know, we're trying, we're, we're trying to think of different things. Like right now we're still in the purple tier in this uh, county. So absolutely nothing is gonna happen. Uh, we're sh we should be going into the red tier, I think next week. And so Passover, by the way, we are going to do online. Uh, we have a Passover Seder on the 28th at six o'clock. That's gonna be online. After Passover, if things are still good, maybe we're gonna start bringing in a couple of classes, maybe the little kids, socially distanced, mass and everything else, but in person. Um, and maybe in May, we'll try to do an outdoor service. Um, but you know, anything we do now, we wanna also be able to live stream because there are people of course who are not gonna be immunized until probably the end of the summer. Um, and even once everyone is immunized, we still have to keep the distancing. And um, even with our, for the high holidays, even with opening up the um, social hall, you know, with a slider, it's still not gonna be big enough for everybody to be there. Um, Harvey says, I would be fine with hybrid indoors plus Zoom sessions. 
when it goes hot, outdoor services might not be do. Yeah, of course, when it's hot, we can't be outside because it's just too unbearable. Um, do we know what congregations are doing in places like Texas and, and Florida? You know, it depends because for example, um, Austin and Houston and maybe Dallas have different um, protocols than the state. In other words, the state says you can open everything up, but they're not doing that. Uh, I don't know about Florida so much, but I know my colleagues are all talking about this and trying to figure out um, Texas and Florida. No, Texas and Florida, the governors have said, you don't have to wear masks or anything, but that doesn't mean that each city is doing exactly that because they all have their own protocols. Yeah, I think Austin is still masking. I'm sorry? Uh, Laurie was saying Austin is still masking. Right, right, right. And I think Houston as well. And um, I, don't, I don't know about Dallas. So, you know, what's crazy is each <laughs> county does it differently in every place around the country. Um, but, you know, we're, we're just trying to figure out what, you know, based on what we know, trying to be as safe as possible um, and as fair as possible. Because, you know, if we only allow vaccinated people, what do the other people do? We're thinking maybe for high holidays, we open up everything. So we have some people outside, some people inside. Um, it's very complicated because, you know, I was talking to some of my colleagues yesterday who are um, Protestant ministers. And I'm not sure everybody's, you know, as aware of how difficult this is technologically, okay? First, you have to be distanced and masked and all that and, and monitor who goes to the bathroom, right? And, and oh. only one person at a time, right? But then on top of that, um, if we want to be able to also do live stream and Zoom, that involves a lot more uh, equipment and at least one person to run it. So it gets more complicated. It's not, you know, just simple. Um, I mean, you can even see just doing a Zoom service like this without trying to do a hybrid service that, you know, <laughs> it's really hard to keep up with all the slides and the videos and the muting and the this and the that. And ideally, my, okay, my ideal would be to have um, a Zoom service, live streaming and in person. So, but if we have a Zoom service, then we want those people to be able to interact with the people inside the sanctuary and vice versa. And so how do you do that? And where do you put the, anyway, it, it is complicated. And luckily we have, first of all, COVID committee thinking about it. Mm -hmm. And um, yes, the sanctuary, okay. Harvey says, if you had a sanctuary camera that was set, you could then zoom. It's, it's not that, no, it's not that simple. It's not that simple. And then the problem is if you're live streaming, you don't want to just have a static camera just showing, you know, let's say the two clergy people, you want to be able to do different camera shots and then somebody has got to operate the camera. Um, so we're working on it. And we also have uh, David Crone, who has been helping tonight with the, um, the slides, which I really appreciate. Thank you, David. Um, is he and Tim Bell are looking into uh, what we need to do about the airflow in the, in the sanctuary. You know, do we need filters? Do we need to change the airflow? That there's a big, huge question there. Is it necessary? Is it not? Um, we have a COVID committee, and then also Morris and Jory, who um, you know would probably be the people to decide what the equipment is and how to set it up. And so it, you know, it's it's really not simple, unfortunately. But we wanted to, you know, we, we wanted to get a sense of how people were feeling. So it seems like the overall consensus is vaccinated, distance, and masks yeah. would be comfortable. And I'd be willing to come back. To okay, the great. Holidays great. With masks. <laughs> yeah, Bill Oppenheim says uh, the real issue is how effective the vaccine is. Like, we're not sure. Is it for a year? Is it for three months? I mean, there are all these questions. And <coughs> so, you know. We're just, we're just gonna work on it. And um, you may get a phone call from somebody on the board asking you about it. Um, and uh, you know, this is a good start to just hear people's responses. I know people wanna come back, they wanna get together. The other thing is I got a, a notice from uh, Chabad. So they're doing a, a Seder, is it a Seder? There's something they're doing. Oh, no, 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 it's their service on Saturday. And they're having a kiddish luncheon. And I, I, that's the last thing we're going to do here is share food <laughs> until we know that we're really safe. Yeah, yeah, I know. That's for sure. Yeah. So, you know, Rabbi, my sister in France, they've been meeting. They've had services all along. 
Wow. Everything well, else is closed, but they've been meeting. Yeah. Two. Well, we've we've sort of tried to go overboard with caution and not put yeah. our, any of our congregants at risk. Um, so April 28th, we're going to have a Seder, like we pretty much like we did last year. March. 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 What did I say? April. April. I said April. Okay, I'm ahead of myself. Sorry. No. March 28th, we're going to have a Seder online and uh, an email, a congregational email went out uh, a few days ago asking you to RSVP. The only reason to RSVP isn't obviously for food, it's that we're going to put together gift bags and that'll contain the Haggadah and some little goodies in there. So there's going to be a pickup on the 21st, which is a week from Sunday from 10 to one, where you can pick up your bag. Um, if you're unable to come and do that, you know, because of uh, physical limitations, um, the uh, Open Arms Committee is gonna be delivering bags to a few people. You don't have to take the bag. We're also gonna make the Haggadah available to download. And then you'll just have the Haggadah. It's a Haggadah I put together with um, a, a website that I never knew about that Andrea McNellis told me about called Haggadot.com. You can put your own Haggadah together. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna use that. And then instead of sharing the screen, we'll be able to see each other. Um, Very cool. And then April 8th is Yom HaShoah. And the, the uh, person that I had invited last year is gonna come. I said to her, this was right after we locked down, you know, and um, you know, I, she wasn't gonna be able to come in person. And she said, well, why don't I do it online? I said, oh, let's wait till next year when you can be here in person. Okay, so she's going to be online next this year. Uh, so she's she's a, a journalist who wrote a book about uh, German women during the Holocaust. So it should be a very interesting lecture. And of course, we'll have a service. And then over the weekend, you will have access to um, a film called Resistance, which is about um, the French mime Marcel Marceau, who during the war saved, helped save thousands of children. Um, and so that's all going to be sent out to you. You'll, you'll see. Um, okay. Any um, any other announcements or anybody have something they want to share that's really happy? A simcha. Anybody? I have my second COVID vaccination yesterday. Mazel tov! And you're, and, you're, and, you're, and you're here to tell the tale today. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. You didn't get sick or anything? No. Uh -uh. Which one did you have? The um, Pfizer. Pfizer. Okay, so what I understand is that people have better reactions to Pfizer than to Moderna. I got sick with the Moderna. I did too. I did Me too. too. Yeah. We all did. I had the Moderna, but I didn't get sick at all. So you're tough, Lynn. Well, it varies. <laughs> I had yeah. Moderna. I got really, really tired. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> A couple of days. Anybody I, have? Any and I had the Moderna. We just got tired a little. <laughs> Oh, I so Christine says her daughter is coming tomorrow. That's excellent. Wonderful. Jacob. Uh, uh, Jacob. Oh, My dad got his second shot. Oh, two days ago. fabulous. Good. Fabulous. I have Nathan one as Gonzalez well. Gonzalez got his first shot. Yes, Tiffany. Oh, we got to welcome students back to school this week. How was that? It must have been crazy. It was, it was, it was wonderful. Oh, good. We, we had to, we have a lot of precautions we're following and have to do, but and it is weird, you know, it's unique to see kids in masks and things at school, but um, the families and the kids just to see the joy on their faces was, was all of it was worth it. That's beautiful. Yeah, the kids really need to be together. Mm -hmm. Anyone else have anything they want to share? I'm still in remission. You're still in remission. Hey, good. Yeah. You got good test results? Yeah. Excellent. Right. Mazel tov. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to, um, again, welcome our students. Please feel free again, um, once we uh, are done with the service, to stick around and ask questions if you'd like. I wanna thank uh, David for helping with the uh, slides. And of course, Jordan, who um, did a, such a beautiful job this evening, despite the fact of just having had neck surgery two and a half weeks ago. Oh, wow. So, yeah, your voice still sounds pretty good. Thank you, Jordan. Thank you, Jordan. Let's extend his contract. Okay. <laughs> he looks great. Yeah, he's getting paid so well. Yeah, he's getting, yeah, exactly. 
Um, um, Rabbi, I was, I was yeah, gonna- Yeah, go ahead, Sandy. I, I was gonna say, uh, my daughter, Michelle, starts with kids on Monday. Oh. Uh, half the class on Monday and Tuesday and the other half on Thursday and Friday. Uh -huh. and everybody on Zoom on Wednesday. I don't know, it hasn't, you know, very interesting. Yeah, so I, you know, if I say, if I say it's stressful to try to figure out, you know, how we're gonna do stuff uh, in the sanctuary, it's, it's that much more stressful for the poor teachers who have to do this hybrid concept, <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, I know Amy Perlstein uh, was working on that all week. Um, I think she already had kids in her class um, this week. So very hard. Our thing is all my kids have had at least their first vaccine, some of them the second vaccine. So we're gonna be able to go up to the Bay Area in oh. April and hug the grandchildren. Wonderful, wonderful. Yes, that's something that's going on right now. A lot of grandparents have been vaccinated and they're saying that if they're little kids, you should you should be able to, you know, hug them. Yeah, well, we wanted to wait till the parents were vaccinated right. too. And they're all going to be, yeah. That's wonderful, that's wonderful. Okay, so I'm gonna ask people to, to mute themselves again. Um, I wanna read a piece uh, written by Rabbi Rachel Grant Meyer, who is the rabbi in residence with Hyas, the Hebrew uh, Immigrant Aid Society. Um, I actually happened to have uh, been her study partner uh, when we went to Guatemala a year ago. Um, and this is an Alenu that she wrote. Alenu, it was on us. It was on us from the moment our ancestors were first forced to leave home, charged with transforming their wandering into a blessing for all people. It has been on us since that wandering became encoded in our DNA. From Avram Ha'ivri, Abram, the one who crossed over, to Ha Ivrim, the Jewish people, all of us inheriting the legacy of centuries of crossing from one home to another. As our people became a refugee people, we took on the sacred responsibility to see our story as bound up with the stories of all who continue to wander. Aleinu, it was on us. Aleinu, it is on us. Love the stranger as you would love yourself. For you were strangers in the land of Egypt, God said. To advocate for a world in which the 68 million people who flee for their lives can find protection and a place to call home. To stand with those who leave nightmarish situations only to undertake nightmarish journeys so that they may exercise their legal right to find protection in these United States. To cry out for the families who are separated from one another, detained without an end in sight, babies calling for parents who may never see them again, to speak up when those in power shut the doors of our country to victims of violence and persecution, to stay outraged from a place of love rather than hate, from a place of welcome rather than exclusion. These two are our obligations without measure. Aleinu, it is on us. We know the cost of making any other choice, of demurring from the holy task of transforming our wandering into blessing as we bow and bend to the source of freedom with visions of a repaired world in our minds and the commitment to fulfill these visions on our tongues and at our fingertips. Aleinu, it will always be on us to remember that there is no us and there is no them. There are only God's children, each deserving of blessings of liberty and justice. We continue with the Aleinu. Alenu, 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 the Shabbat la Don Hakol, la Tet Gedula le Rotser Breshit, Shelo Asanu Kegaya Haratzot, Velo Samanu Kishpahada, Shelo Sam Kelkenu Kahem, Vegor Alenu Kehohamnam, Vanaknu Kori. Mishakadim, <laughs> 
Emet malkeinu efes umato, kaka atu v'torato, v'yadata hayom, v'yadata hayom v'ashevot ha'elevavecha. Ki Adonai hu ha'elohim, v'ashamayim b'imach, v'yal ha'aretz, v'yal ha'aretz, v'yitachat, e'nod, e'nod. כתוב בתורתך אדוני ימלוך לעולם בעד ונאמר והיה אדוני למלך על כל הארץ ביום ההוא ביום ההוא יהיה אדוני אחד ושמו ושמו So at this time, we are going to think of those who are no longer with us, and we hope that their memories will be a blessing for everyone. We offer our condolences to the family of Robert Doctor, who passed away this week. Is anyone here observing Shiva or Shloshim or the first year of mourning who would like to mention a name? You can either unmute or put it in the chat. Brenda Oppenheim. Werner Lucas. Arnie Geller. Sanford Victor, first year. Hyman Feld. Hi, Susan. Frank Susan Andrews. Jones, Gary Ferris. Sorry, go ahead, uh, Gail. Oh, Frank Andrews, first year. Anyone else? We're also observing yard sites this Shabbat for Rose M. Singer. Margaret Corlett McHiggins, Ricky Andrews, Ralph Weinberg, Harold Cohen, Marion Brandler, Jane Blumenson Welke, Naomi Hoffman, Aaron Rinsler, Henry Prince, Elizabeth Peterzell, Benjamin Grant, Anna Badofsky, Anne Jaspin, Joseph Marks, Louis Axel, Rhoda Spiller, Nellie Rubian. Anyone else observing a yard site? And of course, we think of those who perished in the Holocaust and have no one to say the Mourner's Kaddish for them. Please feel free to unmute and to join me for the Mourner's Kaddish. Next slide. Yikadal. May the source of peace and peace to all who are mourning and comfort to all who are bereaved, as together we say. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to ask people to please mute themselves again. And uh, Jordan is going to lead us, and we are from the garden. Yeah. 
far from the mountain and the hope blowing on the wind. We are from the Holy One within. I don't think I want to. I think I'm going to leave. Okay, maybe you want to mute yourself too. Okay, let's get right to it. Ah. Uh. We give thanks to God for God. Our voices rise in song together as our joyful prayer is said. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Hamotzi Lechem in Haaretz. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. <laughs> have a wonderful day tomorrow and have a wonderful weekend. And uh, if you'd like to stay on to chat, please do.